uh, bad dragon dildos. We tried that one too. Oh no, mm. they wouldn't yeah. do it. <sighs> it's the weirdest thing. They also have flashlights. You wouldn't have guessed that. I would have totally guessed that. Hello, and thank you for listening to the Maxim Mediocrity Podcast. My name is David Shockley, and with us today we have... Ryan Kay. And our special guest today is the lead singer, guitar- one of the guitarists, frontmen for the New Jersey-based band Hadera. His name is Christopher Federici. Uh, thank you very much for coming on today. Are you ready to take a shot with us to start things off? Absolutely. All right. And to- What are we drinking today? Let's see. It Uh-oh. is Dus... Dos Madres? This is Fuck one of the I things know. that uh, Sean thought was whiskey again, and turns out to be rum. <laughs> wasn't actually whiskey. It is a, it is, it's not aged eight years, it's aged five plus three years. Yes. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> five years in That's one you know thing, three years yeah. in the other. <laughs> so, gentlemen, a toast. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Uh. That's What's the matter, you pansies? <laughs> oh, Great tradition. Yeah, that's oh, nice. God, why do we do this to ourselves? <laughs> so now that we've done that, we're going to start us off with a trivia game. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yay, we're going to learn things. I got this. So just for the people at home, the way this game works is we have five separate questions, and they're kind of 50-50 based questions. So there's, there's one of the other answers, so you have a 50-50 chance of getting them right. There's uh-huh. five questions in total. I like the mods. Yeah, yes. not bad. <laughs> I'm going to be asking the questions, and uh, you are going to be answering them, and, and Ryan is going to be answering them as well. Uh, these are music-related questions, <sighs> so uh, we expect you to do a little hey, bit yeah. <laughs> better than our control over here. Yeah, don't hey, expect hey. too much. I-, I got things. I can do somewhat okay. He's got things and stuff. And things words. and stuff and <laughs> stuff and things. Yeah. <laughs> so, actually, Ryan, you do have a little bit of an advantage. You are a drummer as well, so you yes. know. Yes. Oh, ah, no oh, drummer jokes. What? I just like to bang things. Oh. Uh, the the problem is is that uh, he has no idea to how to handle the last question because he can only count to four. <laughs> One, two, three. No, no, no. Uh, six, eight. Six, eight. Yeah. All right, there you go. <laughs> only to three then. No, six, eight is six. Six to, yeah, that's just six to eight if you do it by thirds and it's three, four. But we're not doing that. Oh, look at those technicalities. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I can do waltzes like a bitch. <laughs> so now the... The way the scoring is going to work is that if you get if you only get one or two questions correct, then you must take an additional shot at the end of the game. Uh, if you get at least three correct, though, you do not have to take a shot. All right. And as a twist, if you get four or all of them correct, then uh, me and Ryan will have to take an additional shot. Oh. You better not get them all right. Yeah, this is pretty good. All right. Yeah, this is not so bad. How many what? questions are there? Five questions. Five. Right. Five and only five. Yeah. It's like the Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> so are you ready for the Maxim Mediocrity Pop Quiz? All right, yeah. Question one. If you play all of the black notes on a piano, what kind of scale have you just played? A... Oh, did you want to try it? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. No. I'm just Please excited. I don't have to give you the, the option. No, throw them at me, yeah. A pentatonic scale or a heptatonic scale? I'm going to okay. say... Okay, you go first. No, no, please. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> now I can't piggyback <laughs> off his answer. <laughs> I'm going to say pentatonic. You said pentatonic? What do you think? I'll say the same. Also as well. Ding, 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 ding. You are both That is correct. also a great band All right. Name. The pentatonics. pentatonics. Yeah. They, yeah. They play with Lindsey Sterling and shit. Man, yeah. is that a band? It is. It's it an is. Aca- they, they sing. They're, yeah, you know, they're an a cappella group. Yeah, they don't actually play any instruments. Right? It's like calling Simon and Garfunkel a band. Are the Black Eyed Peas a band? Oh, <laughs> we're really stretching it. Do we, do is what they make music? Uh oh. <laughs> so, Davey, what is your next question? Uh, what? Which one of these is the lower vocal range, alto or soprano? Alto is lower. Say alto is lower. Alto is also. Ding lower. ding two for two. Because honestly, when you get your nuts cracked, you can't say oh, soprano. No, alto. No, nah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. In Hedera's biography, it says that Hedera combines the tension and release of jazz with the predictability of backbeat-driven rock and roll. And uh, we've been listening to it. Tension and release. Who wrote that? 
You know, I have you know, yours truly. Really? Ah, yeah. That's that's some good copy right ah, there. Yeah. That is impressive. <laughs> so I was I ha- thinking something else, but okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that you were the one who wrote that because I have now have a question about jazz history. Mm. Oh man. It's gonna be tough. Who made their claim to fame in the jazz scene first? Nat King Cole or Jelly Roll Morton? Okay. Mm. Okay. I'll be honest, I don't know who the fuck Mr. Jelly Roll is. Is he a big guy? Uh, yes, they're both very famous. Well, no, no, no. I meant big, like girth. Um, because <laughs> if you call a actually guy no, Jelly Roll, no, when I was looking it up. No, he he wasn't. Yeah. He's a thinner guy. Well, I'm gonna go with Nat King Cole. <laughs> My man but, just likes donuts. What are you talking but about? But <laughs> I feel like Mr. Jelly Roll is the the one that you had just because it's such an odd name. So so, who do you think made their claim in the jazz scene first? <laughs> no. You know what? <laughs> I believe we should have our guest answer. First. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. I am saying there's more of a Dixieland jazz vibe with Jelly Roll Morton, so I'm going to say him. Okay, and Ryan, what do you think? Just because I don't want to be the, the same person, I'm going to say Nat King Cole, but oh. I'm probably wrong. Okay, well, our guest is correct. Jelly Roll Morton, yeah. he, was, he made it on way, way beforehand. Uh, he actually <laughs> was one of the guys that, that he, he had... He, ugh, sorry, I'm getting all tongue-tied. Jelly Roll Morton, uh, he was apparently a dickhead. And he uh. said that he invented jazz. That's how early oh, back this okay. is. I mean, that's oh, man. That's awfully generous, but. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Sorry, guys. You're doing I great so far. Shit. So far, so good. You, I'm not liking this, Dave. Dave. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. I've had three now. Yep, so now yeah. you've got three. So I'm now you do two. not have to take an additional shot. So Wait, I'm, wait. If I get three, do I not have to take a shot? No, you definitely do. Damn it, the hell. Oh, You're part yeah. of the cast. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck my life. <laughs> This one, I'm going to amp up the difficulty a little bit here. Uh, right. Also a j- another jazz history question, but this one has three options. Oh, man. What was Louis Armstrong's nickname? Hot Lips, Satchmo, or Bemo? Oh, man. Yeah. Mm. This was Louis Armstrong? I mean, Louis go Armstrong. With, I'm going to go with them lips. You're going to say Hot Lips, yeah. Ryan? Okay, Hot Lips, Satchmo, or Bemo? Okay, I will admit, I do not know this one, but I will take an educated guess. The second one. Second one, so Satchmo. Satchmo. That is correct. Oh. Fuck. I know, it's in the back of my mind, my unconscious. I was about He's to doing say really good. Bimo, but I knew that you had adventure time on the mind, so. <laughs> Whoa, yeah. So, yeah. so that's why, that's the whole reason that there's three in there, just because I wanted a reason to put Bimo in Bimo a question. Bimo in there, yeah, right? <laughs> uh, Bimo, for those who don't know, uh, that is a character on Adventure Time. He's like a walking calculator. Yeah, he's like, he's, he's their like video a game. game boy. Who wants to play video games? <laughs> I love Bimo. He's Did my you man. look up the background of that answer, perchance? Uh, well, why no, did they I call didn't. him Scratchmo? Satchmo. Satchmo, Scratchmo? Yeah, yeah, no, that was that was the DJ. He was Scratchmo. Scrunch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Squanch mode? <Yeah. laughs> All right, we got one more here. Uh, this one is uh, about rock and roll history. So, Dave, you if I about... end up punching him, does, does he still, like, win? <laughs> he does He does win. Damn. Like, well, he, hey. You can't win if you're knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're already guaranteed to take another shot, Ryan. I hope you know that already. He I'm aware. Doing great. Our, our technical aid here, Sean, is giving me the next shot because... Sean, he's way ahead of it. <laughs> Because he, he saw the look of defeat in our eyes. So, this rock and roll history question is about Jimi Hendrix. I oh, love no. it. Oh, then you should, you'll should you get this one. Oh, here's hoping. <laughs> Once while in London, Jimi Hendrix outplayed another famous guitarist after Hendrix asked, asked to jam with them on stage. Who was that other guitarist? Was it... I forgot to give the question. Was it Bob Dylan or Eric Clapton? I'm going to go with the clap. You know what the clap? My favorite artist, period, is Bob Dylan. Oh fuck! Oh, Bob I had a feeling, and I and I know for a fact that he can't play the guitar worth <laughs> worth fucking. Damn. <laughs> and do you know the rest of the story to this fact? Um, oh. a little bit. Do you have more info? Do you know about this? I do. Yeah. Shit, he definitely so, won this one. So when Jimi Hendrix played here, Clapton was with him, right? And mm-hmm. they were playing together. The answer is Eric Clapton. Yeah, that is one hundred. Oh, I got the clap! Right. I you got, got the it. clap! And after oh, wait, they kind of traded no, I off, don't have the clap. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of traded off solos back and forth. And afterwards, kind of like almost in the middle of the set, Eric Clapton like hastily grabs a cigarette and just like runs off. And so him, Hendrix is playing and the band's gone. And, and more or less, it's just like, a, oh, that was, that was like fucking weird. 
And sure enough, he's in the back, and either a manager or a friend comes up, and they go, they go like, man, like Clapton, what the hell happened? And he's like li- shaking, and he goes, no one told me he was that fucking good. Yes. <laughs> and he like, and like, that's verbatim. Wow. How about that actually happened? That actually happened. That, he, that's real. <laughs> he yeah. outplayed Clapton to the nervous breakdown. to the nervous point. breakdown. Yeah. Wow, that is incredible. Uh, so I have a little bit of a secret here. Uh, I actually oh, do have a sixth question because I want to give you a handicap. But seeing that you have cleared the board, would you like to get <laughs> six out of five? Yeah, sure. Would you like yeah, to go for it? And if see you what get, it is. If you get this one, this one I intentionally made a little bit harder. Wait, Dave, has he gotten all of them right? Yeah, so he's, he's, he's cleared the board. So far, so good. <laughs> I'm giving him a death stare <laughs> for those at home Ryan that do not realize <laughs> that laser beams are going through his head right now. Ryan is now attempting to intimidate the guest uh, with uh, his most uh, intimidating well, stare. I mean, I, did, I, did I do okay, Dave? You did great. Nah, well, okay. yeah, four, yeah, four out of five. Oh, okay. And you may okay. have the option. Not to go, bad. I didn't go to college for music. No. <laughs> <laughs> not so bad. Look at that. Yeah. And that just, well, that just shows so what that is, my What is your sixth and final question? Why is the why is June thirtieth, two thousand seventeen, a notable day for Hedera? Oh, uh, that is what's your A or B? Quite with that? the question, Dave. Dave, is there any multiple questions or is this just no? This is just this is a free form one. Ooh, June thirtieth, twenty seventeen. So that is this past June. Yes. Man. Keep in mind, I do have to be able to research this answer. So yes, yeah, so you have to be able to available. look this up. Uh huh. How well do you know your Facebook page? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except <laughs> actually, man, June thirtieth. So that is early summer. Um, early summer, late spring. I don't even know what somewhere what, around the seasons. Yes. I don't even know what yesterday's <laughs> temperature was. So honestly, I'm not the, a date in general. It, it, it's a time and place. Maybe Doctor Who will be there. Can I ask questions to yeah. maybe like get this a little bit? Yeah, I'll give you a hint. All right. I'll give you a question. Does it have to deal with playing at a venue? No. Fuck. <laughs> wow, that was really I was really banking on that. Does one. it deal with a YouTube post? No. Damn. I was trying to help you. Yeah, I mean, do we do anything else significant? <laughs> um I'm actually really glad that this worked out. Yeah, this is kind of amazing. <laughs> All right, let's see. I'll 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 take a wild stat i mean it's not youtube yep not youtube and it's no. not playing shows mm-hmm. so really you need your web designer you can phone a friend wait a <laughs> sec we have in our audience today another band member of hedera well i'm gonna Does guess he know what do you think that it is going to be a post of some sort it's going to be a picture of some sort i'm gonna guess it's the first time we announced that we are now going as a full-time band of sorts. Ooh, that is a really, really good answer. It is ultimately incorrect, but, <laughs> I, um, but I appreciate the effort anyway. So June 30th, 2017, uh, that was the day that Hedera uh, was, uh, you were alternate alternativeaddiction.com's song of the day with your song, <laughs> Missing Yesterday. Oh my God. Man, now that is research, and I love that, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I, I had no idea like how much like you guys all like follow onto that kind of stuff, but clearly oh, I yeah. got it fucked up with the music theory questions. Oh, but Davey, um, he did clear all five realms. He did. The You're levels right. have been cleared. We must drink now. <laughs> so me and Ryan now have to drink out of solidarity. Uh, you ready, Ryan? Uh, God damn! Gotta drink this eight-year-old whiskey rum shit. Uh, yeah, five plus three. Uh-huh. Uh, five, five plus, plus three. three. <laughs> yeah. Bottoms up, Davey. See you tomorrow. <laughs> that feels well earned I gotta be honest oh my god <laughs> fuck me <laughs> alright oh god that's rum funny thing about this rum is that when Sean had bought the rum he actually thought it was whiskey because he didn't read the label oh yeah yeah I mean that's shout amazing. out to Sean <laughs> he was like oh well, <laughs> who is now giving the me the finger area. <laughs> yeah. and it's aged I mean who ages rum mm-hmm. and he just good enough whatever interesting tidbit this is not the only time Sean has grabbed the wrong fucking bottle thinking it was aged whiskey. <laughs> He's done this twice. Yeah. Well, you know. He just likes brown stuff. Yeah. yeah. It all kind of tastes the same, if I'm being honest. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you, it does, sometimes it doesn't. Do you yeah. uh do you drink when when you perform or 
So I'll always have a beer on stage. And if I'm being totally honest, it's more for the image and the stage presence. Really? I don't even like drinking that much. It's, I mean, it, you know, it's very whatever to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but other guys on stage, for instance, our lead guitarist will always have a beer. He'll barely touch it. But in one of our covers, he'll just run that thing along the neck of, of the guitar Whoa. and just make oh. noises. Oh, God, uh, that's hot. I, it's really hot. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you know, it just looks so cool. So, so, so speaking of hot. Oh, yeah. What what instrument or, you know, band member or whatever oh, yeah. do you think gets the most uh, vagina? <laughs> I mean, what a way to put it. I mean, that is... <laughs> we all know what it is. Quote, but, unquote. But, I mean, vagina. I will say, I will say, normally, normally when you oh, yeah. have a band playing and stuff like that, the lead singer is seen as the creme de la creme. Uh-huh. And usually. And honestly, we are, but okay. And, and then you have, it's usually guitarists, lead guitarists. Oh, yeah. Rhythm guitar does not get their shit. No. Nah. Bass gets nothing. And like I said, drummers, we, we bang things, but really, <laughs> Not we, get, we get the sloppy <laughs> seconds of the band. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. So, uh, do you disagree with my little analogy? You know, I would, I would love to agree. But unfortunately, and ironically enough, the only one that is getting anything is the bassist. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, He's breaking the mold. The rest of us are just disappointments, honestly. <gasps> when I was in my Ow. band, I played bass, and, and the only reason I oh, oh. I sat, I was also the lead singer. Uh, the only what? reason that I that I uh, that I decided to do that was because as a bassist, I knew I would never get laid, so I had to <laughs> compensate. I had to way. compensate, so I had to play bass and sing at the same time. It'd be nice to have known this information <laughs> yeah. before I made that stupid. Yeah, no, decision. you can you can strip on stage as much as you want and run around as much as you want and make all the noises you want, but. It doesn't guarantee you fucking shit. See, I always felt like as a, a drummer, I'd be perfect for like a threesome. Because yeah. I, oh, I, I no, can, I think you're on I to can something. work Ladies. one hand, I can do the other hand, <laughs> and don't get me started with my feet. <laughs> Please send all applications for Sean for Ryan's threesome to maximum mediocrity at wow. gmail. I'm sorry, maximum mediocre at gmail.com. I too can bang things. <laughs> yeah. That's what, what a plug. Doing. What a plug. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now that that's surprising me because your other one of your other guitar players, Victor, he seems yeah. like a cuddly motherfucker. Oh d- man, accurate. You're so accurate. He just, He's I, a big teddy bear. I just go. I just want to hug him. He is so cuddly. Victor is this huge black dude. Giant. I mean, he's giant. He's got all this fuzzy, be- you know, hair for his like a beard. Mm-hmm. He's just all cuddles, and it's like a soft beard. You know, oh. some some beards like they're prickly, Damn. right? You really understand him without meeting him. I gotta be honest. <laughs> you really got it. I mean, he 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 is the definition of a teddy bear. Oh my god, Victor! Shout out. Wish you were here, man, because I shout out. I just want to hug you, Teddy. <laughs> he would take it. Yeah, he loves hugging people. I mean, he's a kind guy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna detour a little bit here. Yeah, not not quite because we're still talking about. <laughs> singers and the like i've noticed and yeah. this is just me and my observations i'm kind of curious on why this is why do lead singers have scarves oh yeah <laughs> oh man you know so this is kind of funny i've been called out on this for multiple <laughs> m- uh, multiple but the thing is times. you're not the only one i've seen that wears a scarf that's yeah. a lead singer now that i don't know so i'll say this a red scarf is a symbol of adventure and I'll uh, tell you, that's why I do it, as schmaltzy as that is. So every time you get is. on stage, you, you stand up, and you're like, Wah! and you throw it into the wind, and you're like, I am Snoopy. A little, <laughs> a little bit. Uh, <laughs> but so, yeah, to piggyback off of this, I recently had an interview at, uh, at a venue we played at, the Rusty Nail. We played at this venue last night, which is crazy to think. It seems like so long ago. And the interviewer called me out. He goes, you know, you're like a newer band. And you got the image down. You look like the cute lead singer. <laughs> it's amazing. You got it down. He goes, and the scarf, I mean, you know, you are, you are perfect. No, no, no. I will say, <laughs> hold on, hold I feel on. like you're giving off like a little bit of a New Jersey vibe. No, I'm Jersey like, as hell. Well, he's from no, New no, Jersey. No, 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 I'm, I'm saying like the, the person that's talking. No. <laughs> uh, you know, you're giving off, you, you got the vibe going down. You got yeah. the scarf. It's just fabulous. Yeah, you know, it's like pretty Philly. It's a Philly, South Jersey. Oh, There's gotcha, a gotcha, blurred yeah, line. Yeah. There's a bridge, yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> Jersey, really, the Jersey accent and the whole thing, that's just not Philly. It's just, it's the Philly Rebellion. A little so bit. I'm saying... from Philadelphia, so. <laughs> oh, man. See you on the other side of the pond, motherfucker. <laughs> Watch yourself. <laughs> I mean, okay, so this guy, right, so he, he calls me out. He calls you out. He's like, you're wearing a scarf. 
Yeah, but and you he's got like, the, you got the vibe down. You're doing what you're I doing. I mean, you're staying in your lane. <laughs> he's so nice about it, and he's great, and I love the guys. But essentially, he's saying like, you're pretty cute. Like that's a cute, <laughs> cute scarf you got there. And he goes, why? How'd you get it? I go, you know, it's funny you mention that. Actually, you know, my grandma made it for me. And he's just Aww. like, man, I can't help but feel like L- a dick. Look, look at that. God <laughs> See? damn that talk. See? Yeah. That is how vaginas go from go, go from a solid state to a wet state. A liquid oh, state. A liquid say. state called yeah. wetness. Oh. I mean, it was hilarious. That guy was so caught off guard. He was like, man, I just feel like a dick now. Yeah. It's you pretty just funny. assaulted my grandma for making this scarf. Yeah, oh, yeah. Grandma Kathy, North I, Jersey. I actually will admit that what like when we when we were scheduling the interview to have with you here, we were wondering. I was like, "Do you think he's going to wear the scarf?" I, I was, I was, <laughs> because if you wore it, I was like, "I got to ask this question." God so help me if he does <laughs> but, not wear but that But I was wondering scarf. in general, like with lead singers, because like everyone kind of Steven Tyler's a big one. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that I was exactly what I was going to yeah. talk about. Yeah, I I researched that a little bit too, and it turns out that it was. Uh, Nope, drawing a blank. Fuck it. Never mind. Uh, well, so I'll tell you why I think so. Right? So he has it tied around um, his mic stand. His mic oh, stand that was right. dealing with like Indians and are uh, like that's something. Yeah, so it was association with that because they they wrap turbans. Oh, and stuff interesting. Like that. So, so I'll I'll tell you what it is for me. Right? Mm-hmm. So on stage, I try to wear a cool outfit. I try to look like a cool guy because mm-hmm. I don't have any gear. I hardly have a guitar. Only sometimes I have a guitar. I don't have the cool aesthetic of, like, a sick guitar with, like, an amp in the back and, like, all the pedals and shit. Instead, it's just me and, like, whatever crappy mic the venue gave me. Mm-hmm. So yeah. whatever I can do to give out some sort of fucking aesthetic. So, so you know. do you dance with the mic stand and, like, wrap it around and be like, boom, You know, boom, I boom, should boom. if I don't. Should, yeah. uh, <laughs> I say, I'd say I borderline, if I could have, because when I did, I was, pl- I was always playing the bass, so I was always very st- like static in my motion mm-hmm. but if i wasn't doing that i would have humped that mic stand to death every you know single that's one actually what our drummer told me he goes i don't know what you do because i never look at you he <laughs> goes but you should be humping the mic stand if you're not you it's like to. man I, I got you know i gotta work on it I, I think your drummer and my myself are on the same wavelength you should be humping <laughs> the goddamn mic stand i think it's just that we hump everything <laughs> and that's what? and that's just what? part what? of what? it what? we just hump everything anything well that that is you sh- anything that we can hump that's not going to sue us we do hump Oh, nice. That that is a uh, I mm. mm. <laughs> a, a little taking it a bit step further. This might be a little TMI, not but sure. not only have I been known to hump inanimate objects, but I have been known to do something called texting, which really? is whenever <laughs> uh, Sean has sound... walked away into the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> so what this is is generally when I'm drinking, I don't know how this plays a part, but it usually does. Sure. Just seems to go together. I will. Sean I will, knows something we I will don't. Take He's my, laughing right now. I will take my dick out. And I will <sighs> beat it against beat it. a wall. What? And and you call it texting? Texting because it's right at my at my waist level. So because it takes two hands, you really want to get enough force in there to get a, like a solid whack. Yeah, just go. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's... And you just <laughs> against a wall. I, I I don't know how to respond to this. Dude. You're known for this. I'm. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. They really. call me. You do this with like random groupies too. It's like wait, wait. I would have if we had groupies. Slap him with my <laughs> well, dick. Yeah. Uh, but uh, one particular night where I drank drinking a copious amount of alcohol, I went over to a friend's house because I couldn't drive, and they were sitting down, they were playing video games on this big screen TV, saying like Super Smash Brothers or something. I right. walk in the door, and we'll get back to that. Oh, yeah, all right. Um, we, I walk in the door, and oh. I, they go, Hey, Dave, what's up? I don't say a, I don't say a word to them. <laughs> I just walk up, I whip Watch my dick this. out, and I beat it against the TV. So it's, hey, Dave, hey, there's a silhouette of Dave's dick. Wow. There is a story that Dave has a mammoth dick. Uh, just so you know. I cannot confirm home. or deny these allegations <laughs> said against me. I mean, I, I, I have not seen it. I'm personally. just saying, yes, they did need to get a new TV. I mean, you're very proud no matter what. Yeah. I mean, regardless of what you have, you flaunt it. That's how, you know, is, am I wrong for this? Like, as a guy, well, well, have, well, you, have you ever noticed that <laughs> you just have it, you just kind of want to show people? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah I mean. I, I'm going to I'm gonna diverge a little bit from Dave's dick question. Amazing. Of sorts, yeah. <laughs> because, honestly, it's too big to fit in this room right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the question is, who... In your band, because you, you said no one's really getting much of anything in your band, but who gets the most amount of attention? Oh, well, 
from besides other, Mr. From, Cuddly Teddy Bear, from other people in general, in like period, who gets the most amount of attention. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like definitely me. I mean, but it's only because I put myself I, out there so much. I'm looking to. He is correct. <laughs> he is not bullshitting. I got the eight here. All right. We we have from our studio audience. They are confirming this, so he's not just you know. Oh uh, no, I mean, in his own chain. No, no, I, I, you know, I make the active effort. I really put myself out there, now, guys. Well, I will that's... say, um, we were there when you were playing at the venue of Homegrown. Uh, oh I think yeah, it was like a couple months ago. Shout out to Homegrown. Homegrown, yeah. great this... venue. We love playing there. Homegrown's great. Uh, this has not been sponsored by Homegrown. <laughs> But just so we should get know, a sponsorship from Homegrown, Sean. <laughs> I will say during your performance, the oh, one yeah. thing I had that was that was a little bit of a downside. Oh, me. I mean, come on. No, no. Man. The one thing yeah, was please, you had your goddamn mic stand on the fucking dance floor, taking it all up. I'm ah. a dance. I like moving around <laughs> and doing this stuff. He was See, actually upset about. I it. I was upset. This isn't a bit <laughs> because now I understand. No, no. He gets the girls. What well, the reason why is because he. He takes up the most space. I'm with the girls. That's the reason why. I'm on the dance floor. Uh Uh-huh. It's immersion. That's a great way to put it. I'm I'm aware what he was doing. Don't don't (laughs) get me wrong. I know what what happens. Sure, yeah. No, no. He's taking that scarf and he's dancing with it. (laughs) It's an active effort, so you know. Don't think it was by accident. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan is just a little jealous because Ryan loves to salsa dance, and I he do. thinks that salsa dancing goes specifically. With salsa. Well, I, I I have done salsa, but I love dancing in general. I can swing dance like a motherfucker. Oh, no, really? I've done swing, swing dancing dancer. too. Don't don't think that I I'm a one-trick pony. I bet you I may be better. Y- you probably thing. are. <laughs> dance <laughs> off. <laughs> no, 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 not today. Not today. Come to but another in show. The we'll have a dance off mid solo. No, oh no, no. My th- th- God. This is one of those things where you, you have to take one girl, you have her dance, and then she dances with another, and oh, then yeah. we realize who she wants more. This oh, is yeah, yeah. A lot of more. This is the racist accents portion of podcast. What? This is not racist accents. <laughs> full circle. It's come full circle. This is seductive Ryan. So after you, after you get done a show. Sure. And you're hanging out. You go back to home. Oh, assuming you're close enough to home to go back home. Yeah, sure. And you, and you, you, you. Turn on your video game system. <laughs> I love it. Which Super Smash Brothers character do you go for? Ooh. What's your primary? That, oh, that is a good one. Th- this, I'm okay. judging you now. Okay, so this is funny. Because there is a very dedicated Smash player in the band. Ve- very. So so they ring you along. They're like, no, no, no. You got to play, man. <sighs> and so you it- keep getting your ass kicked by him, and you're like... Ah, fuck you! You're not I wrong. I hate you. I hate you. He said he has his roommate. My is. roommate does the same thing. Chris oh, Slayton. Yeah. Chris Slayton. Chris Slayton. Tons Another of co-host. bitches. The Chris you had one. You, you meanie? Yeah. I yes. <laughs> yeah. Fuck that guy. <laughs> so the thing is, we don't like playing against him because he keeps kicking our ass. I I'm hate... assuming you're in the same boat. Okay. Hold Victor. Up. Victor is a smash guru. Oh, I got to do it. And then he has a friend, Miles. Who I love Miles. Shout out to Miles. He does a lot of our videos. He actually competes in Smash tournaments. Oh, cool! And he Mm. streams. So I, needless to say, get your ass. I can't even be in the same room as them because I will just take tertiary ass beating. So really, what you're hoping is that you play against eight other people and you come in third. Okay. So man, he really gets it. He gets it. So you play the maps that are like the size of the fucking screen, right? One to one. It never zooms in. You look like a dot on some of them, and you just keep running like a circle. And you're like, you know, and you'd like shield, and you dodge, and And you you hope to survive. Who is playing? (laughs) That are like the the top echelon people. You're like, no, no, no. They're gonna kick my ass. This is hitting. I'm gonna run around and fight the people that I know I can beat. And then I'll go and deal with too close to home. Mm-hmm. The band will play Smash together often, and it's just it's just like, all right, who's going to survive until Victor is at the end? Yeah. And honestly, I play as uh, Link pretty often. Cause mm. I, I, I could see that. I could see you being I Link. I adore. I mean, so I am a hardcore fucking gamer. Nice. I love it. I love video games. I have a massive collection at my house. It's something I do. It's something that I adore. I have fallen to the wayside ever since this goddamn band has been taking up all my fucking time. Uh, uh, fucking productivity. Y- you're bettering yourself. Yeah. My lung Padawan. <laughs> but I gotta say, fucking Link is my boy in Smash. So, David, what, what is your character? It is also Link. 
No, oh, you guys. You're a way better link. I'm, I'm you guys are turning into basic bitches here. Come on. What? The, is that basic? It, it is. Well, so, okay. Everyone so what, wants to be Mr. Elf that has, like, <laughs> chains and shit. Everyone's an elf in that universe. Yeah. Everyone. So, I, <laughs> okay. the they, reason that I that I pick Link, uh, so, first off, what generation do you, of game do you play? Do you play mm. Melee? Do you play the... Oh, you well, know, okay. Or do you, do you play do, the say, newest version? Yeah, I play the newest version because I think it is a great medium between what was the slowy slugginess of Brawl and the intense, like, borderline fucking Street Fighter melee. Yeah. All right, and I like the new one because I think it is, sits in a casual competitive area. Mm. I, I will say... That, that's your un unpopular opinion of the day, I think. What? Most for our oh, my God. I'm, now, now I agree with you, though. Uh, oh, all right, I want all you right. to know I'm on your side. I'm in your court. I will say this. Are we including the downloadable characters? Oh, oh. yes, because that's what you play is all those downloadable characters. No, oh, do you no, actually? No, no, no. I only play <laughs> one downloadable character, and that's only when I'm tired of dealing with someone else's shit. That's corn. Oh, Corrin, Corrin is broken as shit. I will admit Fuck that. Fuck you, Corrin. <laughs> but but never if I don't man. want to, it depends on the map. One, oh if we're God, choo doing least. a flat map, oh, I will choose. Stop. I, mean, I will do a little map. Because this is why I hate map playing this game. <laughs> little Mac cannot get on the map. Oh, little, Mac. little Mac is he a really fun character, though. Yeah. Side version, uh, Ganondorf. Ganondorf. If I want to lay the smack down on some bitches... Oh yeah, do his I big do old punch. Myself some Ganondorf. Ganondorf's hard because he's slow. He's kind of like Bowser. You, you, yeah, and that's comparable. why you either you're either a total <laughs> noob if you use him, if you yeah. use Ganondorf, or you, you know it's good, or you fucking wreck with Ganondorf. Oh yeah, because he has such that. Slow I may not win, but I will get the highest kills. And that's <laughs> tell what you really what, matters. that's actually pretty. Uh, that's what? what? Really okay, matters. that's. Oh, that's in my opinion. So Victor, I know. Oh, man, I wish I could, I wish he was here. He would be dying. He adores uh, plat platinum games. The uh, developer, thus he plays as Bay Bayonetta. Oh, uh, wow, very nice. He loves, and he, and he loves Street Fighter. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, who was it? I haven't played the game enough. Ryu, Ken, which one's in fucking Smash? Yeah, Ryu and Ryu? Ken are both in there. Oh, they're both in it now? All right, so he Those are two separate characters? Yeah, well. I thought you, it was Ryu, Ken. If you've ever no, seen no. some of the <laughs> they videos, really did. they're like, uh, wait a sec. Uh, Sorry, Victor. Well, Ken, yeah. you're basically like Ryu with blonde hair and a red gi. Oh, it's we just need like, someone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he plays the Street Fighter character at times, too, because you can put in the Street Fighter inputs, which is... Uh-oh. Re um that that's only for his one man I've been playing this oh we, yeah we I mean you're like hold on uh, so I mean you're like really into this shit yeah. fine just I have a question for you both about Super Smash Brothers then we can get on to something yeah, else yeah but absolutely I think we can agree if you're if you're hanging out with friends and you're playing the game and you win you cannot use that character anymore that you yes. won with you then have to go with a you character that you're a not as good character. at okay unless so you're a bitch that okay that's that's the caveat at the mm -hmm. end uh, you know unless you've won and you've established dominance. Exactly. Yes. So unless you're looking to continuously be a dick and no one is going to have uh -huh. fun in this game exactly. anymore, then you keep doing it. The but at that is, point, no one's going to have fun. The exactly. thing is with my roommate, he's good at all of them. No. <sighs> he's good at every character. He's good at every Fucking everything. He know The thing is, you, you won't win. So <laughs> we're, we're going to change gears. Complete 180. Sure. I want to know. What is your band's influences as Man, far I mean, as musical genres? I love it. Okay. So, th th so let's th take a quick pivot. Everyone loves this because uh, it's like, well, we're a little bit of this. We're a little bit of that. A little bit of that, right? Yeah. Spices. Yeah. We're all, right. all spices. What makes up? <laughs> so we call ourselves jazz rock. All right, but what the fuck does that mean? I mean, what the fuck? A lot of people want. A lot of people want to say, like, yeah, we like really dig jazz. Well, well, like, you don't know dick about jazz. Right, let's be honest. <laughs> you a lot have of, to elaborate. Like, oh, well, who came we're, first? We're rock. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. Are we modern rock? Postmodern rock? Eh. Man, so that's a whole other conversation. But I hate bands that are like we're we're like post punk with like a little influence from like the alt jazz scene in the seventies. Like, go fuck yourself. You're rock with every freaking sprinkle on top. Of it. Yeah, I got right. you. Uh, but direct influences of ours, uh, I. I and a lot of the other band absolutely worships Radiohead. Oh, ah, okay. Ooh, I would not have guessed that. Radiohead from, from is what I've heard from your band. Absolutely, yeah. Which I think is an interesting thing. I mean, we adore Radiohead. They are what we would call the ultimate bridges between pop music and art music. They are the bridge okay. between art music being that of like classicism and pop being that of what can be considered like typical rock. Okay. And they are the guys that said you can do both and you can do it phenomenally well. 
And I mean, they've proven it to the world over and over again, and they've told everyone else to like shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. And they continued to fucking do it. Uh, what's your favorite Radiohead album? Uh, I mean, you can't just choose. Well, one. yeah, but I will say, I mean, what I think is the best Radiohead rock album because they have <laughs> they have they're hardly a rock band, but In Rainbows is just like an absolute god work of an album. That is when they show you can do rock like in The Bends, an earlier album, mm-hmm. but you can do it with a sophistication of OK Computer. Yeah. And you can just throw those two together and get what a work that will just fucking kick down the doors of anyone else. An interesting point to make with this album is that the first <laughs> song is a trip-hop song in five. Right? The second song is borderline a grunge song, Body Snatchers. All right, so we're talking like fucking like Nirvana influences. Yeah, yeah and then, I, I never really thought about it like and that. Then it is kind of like Nirvana. The third one is Nude, which is a fucking ballad. All right, how the fuck do you go from a trip-hop song in five to a grunge song and then to a ballad and make it sound cohesive and badass all at the same time. Tell you what, you don't. You gotta be fucking Radiohead to do it. Boom! And it is, yeah. He just dropped the mic. Done. Please don't so, tell these mics are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> but but if we are being Cause, more cause more I, on, yeah. I would say that I, I listened to your band mm-hmm. and I, 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 I perused the YouTubeage. Peruse it. And YouTube-age. I would have guessed that, like, you gave off, like, a. Uh, a little bit of a Maroon 5 kind oh of Oh, my vibe. God. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry if no, that's no. what you're... So this is what I will say. But it's like Maroon 5, <laughs> that's so but back like... when they're like in the 1960s. <sighs> so, okay. I'm just this saying that's what I felt. fucking unreal. We've heard that. I know. From a bajillion pe- people. Which... And I'm you, not saying it's you, a bad no, thing. The it's thing not is, a bad you thing mean because... this as, an in, as a very positive if and only if you're comparing us to songs about Jane. Their yeah. first album. 100%. Anything past that, and you are just well, shitting on I, us. I will <laughs> say that when it came to Maroon 5, I never really listened to anything past Songs About Jane. <laughs> okay, so... neither should anyone else, is mm-hmm. the thing. And that album fucking rocks my socks. And, but okay. I, I did hear, like, I, I do feel like there's a little sampling from, like, you know, 1950s jazz. <laughs> a lot of, like, the pre-British um, yeah. invasion. If <laughs> if you know a band, uh, Young the Giant. Oh, oh fuck! Damn. Damn. <laughs> so that was Davies. Assessment. I said that. I said. I said. He said Maroon Five. I said. I said maybe if we mix Maroon Five with Young the Giant. Fuck when they off. have a hell spawn. I mean, that is what they off. would be. So many people have also said this, it's, which, that's which what means it is. it's true. My which, body tells me no. <laughs> which, God which, damn it! I have so as much as you want, song. as much as you want to try to say Radiohead. Oh well, okay, okay Mr. Well, Radiohead. Whoa, 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 whoa! As okay. much as you want to say that. This is what we hear. So, but <laughs> there is a difference, a huge difference between who how you, big who you are. <laughs> are we talking giant dick, black dick, or Asian dick? <laughs> See, there's a big difference. Or texting dick. Yeah, texting but, dick. I which don't know. is like, that yeah, which is on a spectrum. It is. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, where you take your influences from and the product you create are two very different things. Yeah, exactly. Our influences are from the likes of Radiohead, the likes of Wilco. And, of course, from each of us, it's all over the spectrum. Mm -hmm. But when you throw Sean, who loves funk drumming more than anything, when you throw Richie, the bassist, who just adore, he wants to be uh, essentially flee from the Red Hot Chili Chili Peppers. Oh, we all did. Uh, wait, 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 wait. He's not going to wear a tube sock anytime soon, right? Here's hoping I he I think does. he should. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when wait, you wait, have... Wait. Once again, if you have it as a guy, you want to show it off. Yeah, but it's only <laughs> if it's, like, adequately proportioned. Yeah, right? You have a tube sock. Ah. It doesn't matter, I you can, you can put it's like It's all a, an illusion. Yeah. <laughs> But when you throw all these guys together, I mean, Victor studied classical guitar in college. He loves blues guitar. When you throw, you know, Anthony Formasano, who his, like, one of his favorite bands ever is fucking Nirvana. All right, so I'm going to play jazz chords, but I'm going to play with so much overdrive and distortion that you wouldn't even know what chord it is in the first place. Mm. You end up getting Young the Giant Maroon 5, which so, who so would have thought? So you're mentioning all these band members that you have. How did you all meet? Oh, man. So this is a hilarious story that we love telling pretty often. Uh, Victor Logan, rhythm guitarist, uh, met me in choir at our all boys Catholic school, St. Augustine prep. Hot. Yeah. That's some hot Ooh. shit. Uh, he met me and there was a talent show coming up and he was like, Hey dude, you know, you're like in choir. I was like, do you want to like, maybe like do this talent show? I'm like, yeah, sure. Do whatever. It's whatever. We practice a little bit. He didn't we... say he's going to make you sing, right? <laughs> it is an all boys <laughs> school. That, that was understood at this point. 
<laughs> and he said it'd be really sick if there was someone playing the drums in the back. It's like, yeah, maybe we can like. Drummers talk to like someone. to bang things. Just <laughs> so you know, just gotta throw that out there. You so already made the bang things joke. You can't on. do it twice. Keep it going. Ladies. <laughs> So, he's at the, he's at the like he's at the checkout line. The the woman the the cashier like closes boom, the boom, register, boom. and he's like, you know who also likes to bang? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no. But please continue. Please continue. So there's yeah. this awkward Indian kid sitting next to me in physics, and I bring it up very passing. He was like, you know, I kind of play drums. It's like, oh, come play with us and practice. We practice. We go. You know, it'd be really sick if there was a guy playing bass with this. And there's this awkward. <laughs> ass bass guy behind me in my English class. I bring it up to him, and he's like, oh, you know what? It'd be cool if we had someone on the keys, too. It turns out this guy on keys can also play guitar better than anyone in the fucking band. So were any of you guys Friends? in, like, concert band in high school or something like that? Or was this just, like, random people that you just, like, they're, they're, uh, like, it's, they're a bassist. We got it's this. It's pretty random. Two of the guys played together in the past a little bit with another friend, but, like, I would not call any of us friends before this, really. Mm. Okay. And um, then it brings us together. Things working. Then it brings us together in a pretty abrupt manner. We suck for about a month. Well, everyone sucks in the beginning. Uh, yeah, uh, everyone except sucks. For, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and we end up throwing. Do you know who also likes to bang <laughs> things? <laughs> Drummers. Original. Exactly. <laughs> hey, if, if I was a drummer. Hashtag original content. Yeah. Just, just goes back. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Where does drummers rank as far as, like, getting. Uh, Vagina. <laughs> Man, I mean, it's. <laughs> I would say higher than rhythm guitars. Yes. But that's still, like, pretty low, dude. Go work. <laughs> <laughs> There's no love shared. Yeah, yeah. But but please continue with your story. So you got you, you formed a band. You, you've got the Avengers. <laughs> you're, you're about ready to go in. It's funny, to, yeah. To accompany this this talent show. So this talent show, at this point, our band name was the Badinkadinks. <laughs> the Why didn't you keep that? <laughs> uh, we're the we're the Badinkadinks. Brought you by the Badinkadinks. Hey yo, a bunch. We perform. So a bunch you can of hear the Badinkadinks on Amazon.com. <laughs> uh, we come in second, a howling second place. We had enough fun. Second is better than third. You ain't wrong. Who was third? Do you remember? No. Oh. Exactly. Oh, it was two of our other friends. Also a comedy act. Oh, wait, wait. You're supposed wait, you're to saying say that no. you were a comedy act? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> they were also terrible. Oh, yeah, truth. Yeah. Well, first place was a comedy act. Then was the elaborate, immaculate musical performance by the Badinkadinks. And then third place was two of our other friends, Dom and Vito. Uh, Vito. Do uh, you want to know his whole you name? Know, you guys yes. are starting Hold to... Up. John Vito, yes, I want to know. New Jersey vibe, just, 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 just. John Vito, Cyrus D'Antonio, Bertignoli. Shout out to that guy. Just, just fuck off with that name, right? <laughs> I could barely even say that name. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we are so. Does New he know Jersey. how to make a cannoli? Yeah, like, you know, like... The band is Richie, Shawnee, right? Like Chris, Anthony, Anthony, you know, Anthony, Vicky. Not a real name. Not Anthony. A N T apostrophe Y. Any name that has a, uh, an apostrophe So I will it, say, this is like naming a child Mercedes. It's not like that. <laughs> it's it's like naming a child Merc-80s. 80s? Merc-80s? <laughs> Merc-80s, Merc yeah. But, you well, know. You, you came in second. You guys stayed together, I we guess. We do okay Because you, you formed the band that you are in now. So we had so much fun. And you don't look like a high schooler. Yeah. <laughs> so they don't know. S- it's an audio podcast. <laughs> Yeah, he I look very look like a high school, <laughs> but he does have an amazing scarf on. Yeah, so we end up keeping it together a little bit. Uh, we had so much fun playing. It's the first time that a lot of us were able to be in charge of something our own. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as high schoolers, rebel it's... against the machine like Radiohead. You know? Jet... <laughs> I would have thought I like Rage Against the Machine if I'm gonna be honest, mm. but you oh, know, love Rage. Rage, uh, nah, fuck it, turn it off, right? Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, but you know, we keep it going, and then we all go to college. Way far away. We go to Wake Forest, North Carolina, Moravian, PA, St. Joe's, PA, University of Pittsburgh, also PA, and then wherever the hell Richie went in Maryland. So pretty close. Everyone Washington College, got it. Within certain jurisdictions. Except for this motherfucker. Yeah. I go all the way to North Carolina. Went all like the way to Wake Forest. Wow. It That's ain't close. Yeah. yeah. Well, and thus it proved difficult for the band. We couldn't practice unless I like threw aside an entire weekend. Oh, they could play. It's just they wouldn't have any vocals. Yeah, they wouldn't have any songs really. <laughs> <laughs> a 
hold on. I, I, question, question for you, Ryan. Shoot, Davey. Are you getting drunk right now? Because that second shot is fucking hitting me. You, it is. Chris, you son of a <laughs> bitch. This is what happens. Yeah, so take that. Yeah, God right. damn it. <laughs> I feel like we should give him a shot so he's on equal no, playing field. No, we have to play by the rules of the show. The it's max mediocrity fair. doctrine is holy. Just, just, just <laughs> let me give it to him. Just, just down the hatch. Oh my God! No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. But like, I am just like you're talking. I'm like, oh my God! Oh, I am yeah. getting drunk. It sitting is no here. longer Davy's podcast. Yeah, right. It has been completely and come totally, come come totally, come totally, <laughs> come totally. Wow, that is a new. Do word. you know who else likes to bang things? <laughs> um, I haven't heard that one. Every guy <laughs> ever. Uh, <laughs> uh, and to you all know, of our female speakers out there. We respect you as an independent women. We are strong. You are strong. Hashtag me too. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so what ends up happening is that we're all like, all right, we loved this so much. College sucks. Let's continue doing the band thing. Right on, man. We had the serious realization that none of us were good at the band thing. So we all had to make a very serious dedication to bettering ourselves musically. So, so you bring up a very interesting thing that I was just curious about. Oh, yeah. Hold on, let me tell the origin story. But please. Jesus, please. God. I, I love interrupting. We've been on this for 10 minutes. <laughs> let him tell the fucking story. But I'm curious as far as... Lay down your last question, sure. Last question, and I'll keep quiet. Then, then <laughs> I don't want shut you to keep quiet. Up. I just want yeah, to hear I'll the rest, quiet. man. When you were in college... Yeah. The via of sexual reproduction that you end up doing, was it on par with when you were in the band? Does the band elevate you to another s- level of sexuality? Sexuality. So yes. you know, you, it, I, I'm you, not, you I, wouldn't believe this, but this is absurdly relevant to my life. This is the question that a lot of life. guys ask: like, hey, I want to be in the band so I can get girls and get money. Okay, so you haven't gotten the money yet. I'm guaranteed assuming. you will get neither. Oh, <laughs> so that's, that's, <laughs> but here's the thing: was there an elevation? Yeah, I mean, I'm hot as fuck. I mean, that's like how it works, right? So confirmed, just... we're in the studio. <laughs> the studio is my house. So, so, you know, a band is a tough thing. You gotta have a lot of confidence to do this sort of thing. Go on stage, have absolute confidence in your own songwriting and your own shitty covers. And women love confidence. You can. And hear women this love on our confidence other pod- too. Podcast. That's the most attractive. And that's thing. the best way to build confidence. Go on stage, make yourself as vulnerable as can, as can be. Right. If you suck, everyone's gonna hate you, and it's gonna be awkward, and they're gonna know. Yep. Mm-hmm. So you gotta have. You gotta dance like a fool. You gotta. Even if your songs are bad, they're fucking good now. You know, and your confidence will skyrocket. In terms of sexuality. Get this, you, this is, I mean, if we want to have a pivot, this is going to be a fucking pivot. My sister and I are tight as hell. She is my best friend in life. Kate, she's currently in Haiti uh, doing something. Uh, Volunteer work of some sort? Probably? Actually, yes, man. Look at and that. Helping the less It's a fortunate. yoga. It's a yoga retreat with volunteer work. I mean, that is the whitest thing ever, Kate. <laughs> and Sorry, Kate. <laughs> no, no. I, You're white as fuck. I agree. Yeah. I but, thought she was working for a church. Oh, no. She's yeah. doing yoga. <laughs> so, so her and I. So white she, people <laughs> problems. Yeah, that's pretty fucking white. But I love uh, her. I Sean love has just, uh, just uh, a quick update. I, I do believe Sean has just uh, squirted beer out of his nose. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that looks like the most uncomfortable thing. <laughs> Jeez. So, so she has been my guide in life. I have another brother, 10 years older, another brother, seven years older, and then there's Kate. There's like five. Okay. And so, so is she the oldest? Of- no, she is the youngest of that group. Well, I am the youngest. I'm you're, the baby. Oh, oh. I'm the baby by mile. Uh, Davy and I are also the youngest. Yeah, the youngest as well. Oh, I have one brother. Shout out, Mark. Yeah, uh, Mark. I, I have family. There's a lot of fucking shout outs. Shout out, family. We need shout to know less people. Mark, dope. So Kate and I are super tight. At this time in our lives, we're both doing crazy ass shit. So now it's time to make some things happen. So did she say? Let him answer the goddamn question. <laughs> do, do the band. Did she say do the band? Was she well, your she driving is. Force? She is a jazz vocalist in her own life, and she is the biggest supporter of my music career. Wait a second. Wait, your your sister does yoga and sings. Does she dance too? In a jazz. Oh my vocalist. god. <laughs> Will you stop trying to hit on his sister? <laughs> I don't even know what she looks like. Oh my god. She's gorgeous. But she's if fucking she's perfection. anything like him. <laughs> oh, she wears a lot of scarves. <laughs> uh, well, uh, confirmed. She wears scarves. Yeah, she uh, works at a yoga retreat. I know she wears scarves. So her and I are like, Kate. You know what? Let's be fucking intense and let's start something. 
Let's start something not dissimilar from how you started the band and not dissimilar from how she, you know, her job is a job. And so you wants to be in control of something. So her and I are starting a podcast, which go figure. Oh, oh so podcast shit, life. Hey, oh, hashtag can't... podcast. Is this a, is this a podcast takeover? What's the podcast going to be called? Did, have you started it yet? It hasn't started yet. It's oh. called sibling sex. Sibling <laughs> wait, 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 that, that's too many pornos. How Hold on. amazing so is that? That's why every time I go on Pornhub, the first and most popular options are always incest it, porn. It is always what incest porn. What the fuck porn. is up with this? I've, I've been trying. I'm like, no, I don't like incest porn. Like, it makes me <laughs> feel dirty. And it's like, it keeps bringing me back. So this is the point, right? The point is to someone to see that and you say like, fuck, I love and it. And say like, what the, what the fuck is this? What the uh-huh. what the hell is this what? shit? Oh, so you're going for the shock value? We're going for and and achieved the shock value we did, mm. and so it's gonna be a whole podcast covering gender, sexuality, by two siblings of opposite sex. I mm. absolutely love it. If you guys ever want to come back and uh, we'll, maybe oh, we'll have you both. Oh, absolutely, we can have she a, would a, love it. A conglomerate of potty casty, <laughs> potty cast eye, I believe. Cast eye. <laughs> Sorry, when Ryan is drunk, he rambles, and I love him. I mean, we really got off. I got to be honest. We got to my sister and I's podcast, guys. It, exactly. So since uh, we're never going to have enough time to answer that, the first question that we asked you. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm I, I just, sorry. I rant. I rave. I just want to ask you really quickly because I think a lot of people who uh, I think a lot of people who start bands uh, mm-hmm. who are starting music for the first time. Uh, it, I think they're kind of sensationalized about it after watching American Idol. And it's a very America, intimidating process. And America's Got Talent. So what mm. I really want to ask you is, being a full-time musician, what is the day-to-day like? What is oh, that yeah. grind? What is the hardest part of being that full-time musician, do you think? Yeah. So first, you the su- you, you, no, 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 no. You mentioned American Idol, etc. There is pain. Those things are bullshit. All right, that's not how music is made. Those things are such sensationalized commercial music. That is not how you do it. Dave Grohl had a great quote about this from, you know, Dave Grohl, who he said, how, how the hell would the judges have responded if Bob Dylan walked up there and sang and did his great thing? They'd say, honestly, you're not that good of a singer. Take it somewhere else. I will agree with you with that. Oh, yeah. It's not marketable. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. So the day-to-day grind is, it's real. It is no fucking joke. Everyone, so everyone in the band, uh, so three, I should say, three three of the guys in the band have other jobs, and then they meet with the band at other times. Mm -hmm. The bassist and I uh, manage and book the group Mm full-time. It is the most vertical of climbs. You have to make someone care about your music. Most people do not, do not want to go out of their way to you're like another line uh, another number yeah. at the uh like meat factory right there it's like pick a number thank you i'll uh, give you whatever you need and and also that this i mean because we're working in an oversaturated market as well being mm-hmm. in podcasting yeah. and there's just so many so other people and it's such mm-hmm. a i guess a low barrier of entry so like for about 500 bucks you can have a podcast yeah, yeah. uh you know uh, kind of the same thing as far as a band but everybody has to bring up their own 500 bucks that's the only real mm-hmm. difference everybody has to have their own shit that they bring right uh so it's such an oversaturated market and cutting through that noise can be incredibly difficult and right diligence is the most important thing but i also find it can be the most difficult thing so i think a great and it's what we are trying to do uh you have to look at genuinely i believe lifestyle branding So when you look at, say, the Rolling Stones, you envision those lips and that tongue. Oh, goddamn right. And that that says so much more than whatever fucking song you immediately think of. Mm -hmm. We are trying to do the same. We are trying to cultivate a lifestyle brand behind the music of Hedera. Hence, if you follow us on Instagram, very specific posts. If you go to, we have an entire YouTube channel of all these videos done in all these different ways. It is much, much, this is what I would say to any band. It is so much more than the music. The music has to count. Has It has to be good. Everything else, though, is, you know, it has to support that music. If you don't have that, you you do not stand a chance. It's all a matter of media. Who, who, who are In you way. trying to get to? Who, who are you trying to yeah, sure. pull from this aspect or that aspect? Mm-hmm. What type of social media do you think is the most relevant for your band? Uh, tying I'm, into our previous podcast. Yeah, I mean, 
hands down Instagram right now is our most I mean, easily our most viable form of social media. Facebook is now for moms. Yeah. Main, mainly, uh, we do not love Twitter as it does not allow artistic expression in its medium. It allows communication. That's a good point. Twitter is good for a lot of things, but if you want to create a lifestyle brand and immediately go to that page and say, what is this? It's this. It doesn't really accomplish that. You have to be well off enough to then cultivate communication. Instagram. So Instagram in terms of expression and cultivating an image, really important. I'm actually glad that we got on this topic because, uh, because I know with the podcast, I find that I've been learning skills that I never thought I'd learn about. Uh, yeah, and yeah. I'm sure with marketing yourself, you just, you're learning, you find these little pockets of knowledge that someone's job mm-hmm. and you're like, I, I had no idea that this existed. Uh, for example, I just learned about SEO, a uh, search engine optimization oh, and how goodness. important that is. I just found this out last week and I was like, oh my God, this is something I should have been doing and this whole time. Entire job. Yeah. It's an entire job. It's a marketing team's job. Mm-hmm. What would you say is your is kind of the most obscure, the most interesting little skill that you've had to learn about that you didn't think that you were going to so ever think So this is actually a bit of a story for us. Oh. So Hadera, in, our be- in the beginning, we made an effort to utilize a lot of people in what we were doing. We tried making a bunch of music videos very early on. We tried getting help from outside amateurs like ourselves. A lot of the products came out terribly. They came out very amateurish. So part of our brand and what we do is everything is hands-on and real. That is why we have learned video editing. We have bought cameras. We have learned all of the videos we make on YouTube. If you notice and you start from the first one and you go up, they get better. We have seen and some they, 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 they have videos. And better. They look and, good. I listen that, to every one. And that is <laughs> just us five being like, well... Okay, this is what was wrong in the last one. How can we get it better? And, I mean, it skyrockets in quality. Same goes for a lot of other things. A little bit of effort goes a long, long way. And a I, lot yeah. of effort goes a little farther. <laughs> <laughs> Ever so slightly. Exactly. Farther. I'd say when it, when it comes to art and just like visual art, I always notice, and I, and I guess also with really any type of art, is that sure. 90% of what you do, of what you make, looks or sounds terrible. It is, it's that last 10% that really give it that polish. And if it's you a really finesse. dedicate into that 10%, mm-hmm. uh, like that's where all the, but it takes uh, three times longer to create that last 10% than it did the last 90. Most of it is easy. Yep. It's the last bit. That is the absolute impossible part. It is getting that camera to move in such a way that, that, makes that person suddenly, move. Ooh. yeah, suddenly that is a ah. camera movement, not someone stumbling across the floor with a fucking camera in their hands. Yep. That's where all the theory comes in. That's where all the marketability comes in. That's where all the, that's Quite where all bit. the thinking happens is right. So there at that last if you want to know something that. else fun, so this ties into something we're going to be doing soon. Uh, so the NPR tiny desk con- contest is yes. something com- coming up. Uh, we did it last year and video was admittedly very okay. I liked it. Yeah. It's not bad. It was early on in our own video creation. I mean, you it's so interesting to watch us grow. This year, very different. Last year, so the whole theme behind our previous album visually was a uh, tall painting. It was pouring paint in a visual style where it cascaded down. I saw that. That was that was gorgeous. Ah, I loved it. And then you. you did the reverse effect, oh, which yeah. was that what, was nice. You did it exactly at the midpoint of the video. What was the artist that, that originally did that? Do you remember? Now that that I do not know. I just remember seeing it years ago, and when I saw That's you guys exactly. do it, I was actually really excited mm-hmm. to see somebody do yeah. it again. Yeah, I wish I could give them credit. Wherever they are, if you're listening, you deserve all the credit in the world because you inspired us. Mm-hmm. And it creates an eyegasm. Yeah, I mean it's great. So that was the NPR theme last year because we wanted to. A lot of people just perform at a desk and they do well, well enough, and that's interesting. So much of what we do is about being hands-on. I, again, that is our branding. We are hands-on. We do it ourselves. We're creatives, so we use all the paint. This year, uh, we are going to be suspending a desk in midair uh, in a giant cavernous pole barn. Uh, all of the lights will be off. The desk will be covered in disco ball-esque tiles, and there will be one light reflecting from the ground, and the desk will be spinning in midair as a disco ball that sounds and awesome. all of it i and want to see all that. of it I, i'm gonna agree with you dave i would love to see that <laughs> that sounds fucking awesome all of it will be us there'll be no one else we will not hire anyone else for the video no one else to make the thing we got the desk buy the tiles suspend in midair 
That is what we do. That is part of it. I'm going to ask you with this. One of your YouTube videos I saw dealt with goats. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. This is what the fuck was up with that? Man, that's actually cool as hell. I have uh, because uh, my one family of the goats has three goats. It. One of the goats were listening. Daisy. Like, they're like, Mah, Daisy really Mah, enjoyed Mah, it. Mah, yeah. Mah. <laughs> they, they were like head banging to you guys. Yeah, my house, uh, we, we have g- quite a bit of property and uh, we have some goats because, again, I was pre veterinary medicine and I yeah. still love animals. And uh, we figure how funny of a video would that, would that be if we performed in the goat pen? That and is sure actually enough, really funny. Actually, uh, uh, Sean, uh, our PA for the day, uh, his his mother is actually a goat farmer. Oh, okay. She's so you way have, you more have legit some, than we are. Yeah. <laughs> we have some some uh, some goat knowledge floating around this room that I was previously oh, unaware of. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So it it's what we ended up making for video for a series called Here, There, and Everywhere. And the whole point of that series was going to different places, like a goat pen, and recording an semi-acoustic rendition of one of our original songs did you have any trouble because i saw those videos and and uh like we do this podcast privately just because I, i'm always terrified of like outward things inner interfering and ruining something was that a big concern with that with those videos or did you have any weird interactions with people or did everybody um, pretty accepting especially at the uh Baltimore Baltimore, Harbor. i mean i love that you guys know all these videos that was a beautiful one I really uh, that. yes i know where you are yeah so that you. is a huge concern with for that series uh for the here there and everywhere the whole point is to go places and ideally maybe have someone in the background it's the whole point of putting us plopping us in the middle of nowhere and having us just perform mm-hmm. yeah people are gonna say what the hell is what this the fuck are they we doing? performed in maryland a while ago and we had a buddy we had a, probably a homeless guy tagging along the whole time he was just watching <laughs> you us. know what homeless people they they give you the most Honest inspiration. He, he, honestly, he, he because did. Because they was, don't give a rat's ass about anything. He was chilling, and he was watching. It was super cool. When we performed in Baltimore, yeah, there were a lot of people there. And you may notice in some of the shots that there are people in the background listening. I mean, how amazing is that? You're getting a shot of someone watching you perform something. Yeah. I mean, it's great. It's hard enough to get someone to, sh- to actually come to the show. <sighs> yeah. Let alone, you're like, oh, I can actually record. I can prove. Yeah. The, Look, Mom, I have a fan. The harder part, and the much harder part, is getting the... The yes or the go ahead on setting up shop in an area because behind is there any legal ramifications? uh, The cops come up like, "What the fuck are you doing here?" (laughs) Not yet. It's just music, you say. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Like, for instance, in in Baltimore, we knew we wanted wearing a scarf. I don't trust. (laughs) (laughs) We knew that we wanted to be on the harbor, but how the hell you can't just set up shop on the Baltimore Harbor? You will have the police come by and say hey, there's a giant computer here with all this recording software. You got four people with cameras. You got a huge musical instrument. You can't set up shop. Mm -hmm. So instead, we had to contact the uh, the Baltimore Museum of Sciences, I believe, and tell them, can we use your little patio? And they said, sure. No no problem. Okay, um, go ahead. Super chill, yeah. Legal loophole. That was only, that, that's totally legal. I mean, that, no, yeah. It's not a loophole. It's a, it's a loophole as far as they didn't have to call the city of Baltimore. Absolutely. Oh, okay. We were able I, to I'm use sorry. private property to our ad, exactly. advantage. And it will be a similar thing in the future, hopefully. Please bear all the background noise of our hippopotamus PA <laughs> walking down the stairs. He's giving us the finger now. So I, I will say that it, it fascinated me dealing with how you guys went from goats to the Baltimore Harbor. You had a, a lot of... Random things versus just being in a, a basement. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what was it? What was the choice behind that? Well, behind those options, was it? Uh, did you just we're going for contrast, or or how did mm-hmm. you pick the scenes? So it's actually interesting. We have two video series now, soon to be three. View a do, which is strictly covers by us in a slightly more produced manner in our practice shed. So we have our magical. I mean, it's probably the reason why we're able to be so creative. We have our own private space. A practice shed. We can be as loud as we want. It's an old abandoned tra- uh, tra- tractor barn that we happen to know the guy that owns the land. And he's like, you know what? If you want to go there, do it. And That's sure enough, fucking awesome. We have completely turned Th- it into This our- is all in New Jersey, correct? This is in South Jersey, yeah. I remember being a that, that makes a lot more sense. I've realized, because I've been to South Jersey. Imagine that. Uh, <laughs> and it seems like there is a lot more farmland than, you know, Jersey it's Shore and mostly like, you know, Central farmland. Jersey. Yeah, yeah. It, like, I... I I'll be honest, I've driven through it, and I'm like, there's nothing but, like, vineyards. That's it. (laughs) There's nothing but vineyards. So it's actually funny. Our lead guitarist, Anthony Formisano, uh, he grew up on a farm. 
Oh, his, wow. His family, they are, I mean, they are actually farmers. It, like, they make all their income from the farm. That's incredible. It's ridiculous. Very diverse yeah. band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quite the gaggle of people that you've... Uh... It makes it interesting. It makes it marketable is what it does. <laughs> uh, but Very yeah. homegrown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, Shout uh, out to homegrown once homegrown, again. Homegrown, get us back whenever. We are not sponsored by homegrown. <laughs> so it's funny. I'm glad we brought up homegrown again because I had actually talked to you uh, when we were at homegrown. Uh, I had just taken yeah. a pickleback shot, which is homegrown signature drink, I think, is starting. Have you ever heard of this? No. So it's a pickleback shot. It's disgusting. It's so sick. So it's um, pickle juice and uh, rum. I believe it's rum, right? Yeah. Man. And rum. Or whiskey, at the very least. So it's <sighs> so you worse. drink a shot and then pickle juice. Oh. That's it. And I had, Like, the pickle juice is like the chaser? Yeah. Mm. And that's supposed to be better. Yeah, it's supposed to be like the good part. Yeah, and I don't like pickles at all. So I have, I was, I had just done it. I had just taken one of these pickleback shots because I was like, "What's good here?" And someone's like, "Do the pickleback shot." And I was like, "All right, fine. I hate pickles, but fuck it. I'm, Man, let's have some fun." And I did it, and I was like, "That was the worst thing ever." And I sat back, <laughs> and I sat back down, and then you had the, the band was taking a break during this time, and mm. I went up and I and I had talked to you, and I said, "Oh, here, check you know, check out the the my podcast," and I gave you a yeah, business yeah. card unbeknownst to me either later or earlier you had gotten You've taken down by another member of, of the podcast. Oh yeah, we got yeah, yeah, yeah. We got invited by quite a few members. Yeah. <laughs> Great. We were on you. We're like predators <laughs> over here. We saw you and we're like we got to have them on. Fine by us. I just wanted a listener. <laughs> <laughs> He came up. Sean had come up to me. He goes, "Hey, I talked to the I talked to the band. I was like, oh, cool.' He goes, I asked him to listen to the podcast. I was like, me too. <laughs> Go figure. They're definitely not listening to us now. They think uh, we're weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's super, super cool. Great to be invited. Absolutely. Uh, we are so glad that you came. Yeah, um, this is you actually are, are some of the the people that we don't like don't know personally that have been on the show. Mm. I believe this may be. Correct me if I'm wrong. This may be the one year. Of the podcast, I think this is wow. the, this is the one year podcast. Props to you guys. I'm getting the thumbs Holy up. It, it actually is. So we've been doing this for a year, but we only do once a month, so it's like twelve that we've yeah, made. whatever. Uh, so we it's good things. to see that we're finally getting out of our comfort zone and actually inviting people that we don't know. That's genuine progress. And I think this has been a, a really really entertaining podcast. What I do, I want to give you the opportunity uh, to t- say a little bit about the band. Where can people check you out? What do you have going on right now? Sure. Yeah. So, uh, Hedera, the place to follow us with everything is, is, is Instagram. We are at Hedera Sojo, as in South Jersey. Uh, this coming weekend, we have some fun things going on. We'll be recording the Tiny Desk Contest video, so watch out for that on YouTube in the coming weeks. And then this coming Sunday, we'll be playing at the Trocadero in Philadelphia. We'll oh, be, you're playing the Trocadero. Yeah. Oh, we'll, very cool. We'll be playing a, a March Madness show with quite a few other bands, so we're looking forward to it. Uh, should be cool as hell. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. We always end, we're starting to end the podcast with a little word association game. Would you mind playing with us? Just That's to see sure. how dirty our minds are. Yeah. <laughs> well, you Not know quite. who also bangs things, Ryan? Drummers. <laughs> so Drummers and Oni drummers. Uh, so the way this game works for the people that are just uh, tuning in for the first time is that we're gonna go we're gonna go around the triangle here and we're and someone's gonna think of a word and then the next person is gonna think of the first word that pops into their head uh, based off the first word and so on and so forth in a circle or in this case a triangle the Bermuda Triangle of good ideas. <laughs> And Everything will be lost. And so <laughs> it has so far. I don't I don't plan on changing anytime soon. So uh, so we're going to do this and we're each going to start around. We'll do th- maybe three rounds. So we're sure. going to see how far we can get uh, just uh, thinking off the top of our oh, heads. Uh, you lose or I guess the game ends if you repeat a word or if you stumble and you just can't think of anything. Sure. Definitely me, a delay. Mm-hmm. Me and Ryan are at a slight disadvantage being that we've had double the amount of shots that, that you have had, Chris. <laughs> My mind ain't thinking the way it should be right now. <laughs> um, so to start things off, Ryan, would you mind starting off the word association game for us? Hippopotamus. Animals. Zoos. Tiger. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> My God, Dave. You oh, didn't, you didn't even last didn't like one much. round. Fuck, I'm bad at this. I'll go next. <laughs> okay. Uh, Pac-Man. Video games. Smash Brothers. Video. Games. Things. Other things. More. Your mother. <laughs> Your father. <laughs> Family. Sister. Uncle. Podcast. Other things, audio of things of stuff of things. Oh, no. Damn it. <laughs> 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 All 
right. I, I could don't know only say games... things so often. Yeah. All right. Uh, Hedera. Bands. Latin. Scarves. I, I, oh, 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 there's too many <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you hit critical mass because there were so many other things I wanted to say at Doom with Scars. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for listening to the Maxim Mediocrity Podcast. My name is David Chalk. We have Ryan Kay and Christopher Federici here hey, with hey. us today, and we thank you very, very much for listening. Stay woke. <laughs>